Yeah. Yep. Nice. Al, can you turn your phone off, please? Sorry, mate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Proper rude. <laughs> uh, we're back, actually. Laid out show. First one for a long time. Uh, we've got Hamed Gaz and his trainer, Al Oster. What's going on, guys? Hi, guys. Hi. Good, good to see you, lads. Good to see you. Nice, nice new surroundings. Very plush. Yeah, Very yeah. plush indeed. New Moved secret up. location. It is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, new yeah. secret location. Lockdown's been kind. Dude. We're in the back cave. <laughs> <laughs> we live here now. <laughs> Supporters, funders. <laughs> anyway, we digress. So, I made Bunny introduce yourself to to the people listening and then we'll, uh, we'll yeah, get some yeah. questions going. First of all, thank you guys for having us here. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Um, my name's Ahmed Gaz, a professional boxer. I've had 16 fights, I've won them all. Um, yeah, and just uh, on, my way, on, on my journey to be a world champion one day, yeah. Nice, man. Yes, 16 sir. fights, how old are you? I'm 24, just turned 24 in June, yeah. Oh, wow. So when did you turn pro? I turned pro when I was, when I just turned 18. As soon as I turned 18, I turned pro, yeah. I wanted to turn pro before that, but uh, you had to be uh, 18 to turn pro. Wow. But yeah. Nice. So that is that common? Is that is that a common thing that that, no, w- that would it, happen? It's an early start. It's an early start as a pro, isn't it really in this country? You know, like uh, I'd obviously you know heard about Hamid, seen him fight and stuff, and um, over the last few years, but I didn't realize how young he was. You know, I just assumed he'd be he was sort of like late twenties, like you know, like a lot of prospects who've got that many fights, but mm. he's very young. You know, just turning twenty four, and he's got you know relatively the sort of season professional career behind him already and an amateur career you know it's it's an early start but i think you said hamid the reason why you wanted to turn pro is everyone said in the amateurs that style wise you oh. were going to be more suited Definitely, to be a pro yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah. for people listening just onto that point what is the difference between amateur boxing and professional boxing not in terms of what what's the, when you talk about styles can you kind of mm. break that down for someone just to help me and me, everyone else understands. <laughs> <But, laughs> classically, amateur boxing has, has been about scoring points. You know, demonstrating to the judges that you've got better boxing ability. You know, displaying your skills. So, you know, tr- sort of over the over the past few years, you know, amateur boxing has been more about picking your shots, not not particularly landing. You know, hard damaging blows. You know, throughout the fight, round after round, more about just getting clean punches and getting out. Um, you know, and obviously. You, you're limited in the number of rounds you can do that in three or four rounds uh, professional boxing obviously over 12 rounds it's more of a you know it's a marathon rather than a sprint you know you're trying to you know put your put your skills on display but also it's hurt your opponent you know it's like the hurt business and you know it's about you know round after round you know imposing a game plan imposing a strategy and you know breaking down your opponent you know methodically if you don't get the knockout you know so it's sort of what why you told me why you in the amateurs what were you doing that was different that made you think you'd be a better professional boxer why were people saying that just my style like i was i just i've always had like um uh, aggressive style you know coming in fighting and in the amateurs it's like just about hitting and then not like running around and stuff like that but it's but in the pro game, it's just more like into, not necessarily like, you know, fighting all the time, but like, you know, it's, I don't know, man, it's just like, you know, not having that head guard day and and the vest and it's just a different game. And yeah, it's completely different. Like e- even to like, you have some sparring sessions where it's like a fight and then, but when you get into the ring, a professional f- fight is just completely different. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think so. I think as well, like amateur boxing in the UK and Europe has always tended to be even more of a sort of point scoring sort of thing, you know, in terms of the style, the way fighters fight, more sort of upright on the toes, like Hamid said, getting your shots off and getting out of range, not, not necessarily running away, but using your feet more, distance more, uh-huh. you know, as, as a sort of, you know, that's your first sort of defensive tool is moving out of the way, whereas in professional boxing, style-wise, you know, you, you can, you know, get in there and fight. Like he said, you know, you can sort of stay in the pocket more. You can work inside a little bit more, get your shots off, clinching, all the sort of inside work that 
in amateur boxing, generally, you're not really allowed to do. You know, the referee breaks fighters up you know, really quickly, gets them back out boxing. They want to see jabs, straight punches, getting the shots off and, and getting out. So, you know, for a fighter like Hamid, in terms of, you know, his aggression and the way he wants to fight, he was always going to be more suited to be, you know, a pro because in the amateur, you're not, you're not really allowed to fight like that. You know, it has changed, you know, in the last you know, few years when, you know, the head guards have gone and they've, la- they've you know, they've allowed more inside work and the sort of scoring body punching because, he, you know, previously before that, you know, body punching wasn't even scored really. Mm. You know, it wasn't, it was, you know, the, it was a target area, but when it was like computer point score and it was, you know, the, the award points for, you know, the opponent's head getting snapped back or they can see a clean punch in the head. So even, you know, so body punching, inside fighting, aggressive, you know, fighting on, you know, in the pocket and exchanging punches, counter punching wasn't really a style talk because it, because it wasn't worth mm. doing, you know, in in the amateur game because you weren't going to get any success with it. Whereas professionally, obviously, that's that's what it's about. And especially like, you know, if you want to be, you know, a fighter that is willing to take shots, give shots and do damage, you have to be willing to fight in that sort of range, you know, mm. not using your feet all the time. So, mm. you know, that's the, you know, it's still, there's still a, you know, real distinction. And that's why you get fighters who, when they cross over from amateur to professional, you know, the style doesn't work for them and it, it takes, you know, quite a, a long time to adjust. You know, yeah. I think that's something that Hammond's obviously got in his favour that because he turned over so young, you know, style-wise, it's always been there for him. It, it hasn't been a bit, it wasn't a big change for you, was it really? Oh, no, no. Oh, nice. So what was it like turning pro at such a young age? What was your first fight like? Because you're basically still a kid, right? Yeah, the first one... I, I turned pro at, at Mark. Um, I, I spoke to Mark. I w- he wasn't training us at the time. You were like training separate to the uh, to to the professionals. Um, you were training separate. And I just went. I just approached him and says, "My look, Mark, I want to turn pro." He goes, "How old are you?" And I, at the time, I was I was uh, seventeen. I was just not far from being eighteen. He goes, "Oh, just give it another year and see how it goes." I says, "Yeah," and then. As soon as I turned eighteen, I said, "Look, I just can't do this anymore. I don't. I don't want to be an amateur anymore. You know, I want to turn professional. I want to start making money, and you know, I want to be in the. I want to. I want to have that. I, I want to build my professional career. So it's like there's 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 obviously two routes. Ultimately, you can take in boxing. There's one route that you can go through, the Olympics, and then the other one is just like there's a lot of like Mexican fighters that's come up and they've just. They've turned professional young and, you know, they've just built their record and, you know, like whilst other amateurs have gone to the Olympics and, you know, won medals and stuff like that, they've like kind of built their record as a professional and that's what I really wanted to do because ideally I, I, I preferred the professional style. So, mm. yeah, I approached Mark and I said to him, look, Mark, I just want to turn pro and, you know, uh, he got then he, he agreed and we just... We just turned pro, and then I remember having my first fight. I was just, I was just so nervous, and then as soon as I got weighed in, and then j- the nerve just went away, and I, I was just like so, um, I was just so eager to get in and you know to fight mm-hmm. because you train f- for the amateurs. It's like you train constantly in the amateur season, but for the pros, you, you, it's more. I don't know. It's like more. You get into a training camp and you got you get into a proper routine, dieting and stuff like that, and you look forward to it more. So as amateurs, like a week before, two weeks before, or oh, you've got a fight. Yeah, oh, could, yeah, could yeah. be less, couldn't yeah. it? You yeah, know, yeah, a couple yeah. of days, right? You're fighting. Yeah. You know, you always have to be on it. But like, mm. if you're building towards one sort of special event, uh, you know, especially your pro debut, mm, it's definitely. a big deal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to put like a good show on, sold little, quite a lot of tickets and. Yeah, I got in the ring and did good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was happy. Yeah, as soon as as soon as like a lot of fighters they get nervous and stuff. But as soon as once for me once I got in th- in that ring, as soon as the bell went, boom, there was no nerve, no nothing. I just wanted to like fight and that's <laughs> it. <laughs> nice man. So you've got a massive record now. So yeah. what's the in terms of the number of it, like the the way it looks is is impressive, right? But what's the what's the plan now? Because obviously, you like keep chipping away, keep building it. Mm-hmm. And I always think with certain with fighters that if I was coming up, I'd be I would avoid someone with a record like that. Mm-hmm. Do you know it'd be quite difficult? Yeah. Do you find it's difficult to get fights having a record that that is that uh, bulky in a it way? It is. Yeah, we we like we've 
when it comes to like fighting, uh, because obviously I've got a good record, um, people are asking for a lot more money and stuff like that. And then there's like a lot of the times where we have to get fighters from abroad and because there's nobody really wants to fight in, in the country. So mm. ideally now, um, e- not even now, like a few fights before, actually, I was ready, you know, I'm ready to fight for titles now and hopefully I should fight for titles soon, yeah. Yeah, nice. so that's the plan, yeah? Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, yeah. Like he needs Definitely, yeah. competitive fights and, you know, fighting for titles and, and moving up the ladder, you know, like he's he's done his apprenticeship, really. He's had all these fights. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he, <coughs> he's got the potential to, you know, to move on to championship fights and, and win titles, in my opinion, and he's confident about doing that. So it's just about, but as you, you know, as you lads know, it's uh, it's a business boxing. It's getting the right fights at the right time mm. and having people uh, that, that are helping you along the way. Um, because you know fighters want to fight you know like fighters want to fight anyone he, you know Hamid obviously f- you know would be confident whoever he was put in with but you know there's a time and a place to pick those right type of fights and the fighters who are successful generally um, it's because they've you know they've taken the right fights at the right time and they've progressed in the right way you know f- you know for their own career yeah um, but yeah he, he, he needs proper fights and he needs you know opponents that are going to push him and that are going to bring out the best <coughs> in him, you know, bring out the best in him in, in terms of his, his development because, you know, he's getting better all the time in the gym and, you know, we're just itching to show it now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Especially, nice. I've, uh, me and Al, uh, we, have, we haven't been, w- w- we've just been working it's about, about six months six now, months, yeah. yeah and six months. Yeah. We were just about to get a fight and this lockdown's happened. Yeah. So yeah. I was just so eager to get in the ring. Yeah. yeah. So, Al, so how did you guys actually come to get to know each other and also what's impressed you the most mm. from, from Ahmed's skill set? Uh, it was a mutual friend, wasn't it? Adam, yeah. uh, Adam Khan, yeah. good guy, sort of put us in touch. Um, and Hammer gave me a call and explained what he wanted to do and explained the situation he was in. Uh, so we did a little uh, trial period, didn't we? Yeah. Um, just to see, because obviously, you know, like I said, I'd seen him fight before, you know, I know he's a good fighter, um, you know, but, a trainer fight relationship is it's a it's a big commitment from from both sides you know time commitment and you spend a lot of time with each other uh, so you want to know it's right you know it has the personality fit has to be right um you know i've had a, f- a couple of fighters you know in the past couple of years approach me about training them you know decent professionals and after a, one trial session or you know speaking to them a little bit more you know it's, i just thought it's not it's not right it's not going to work you know because you know, my, myself as a trainer, I, I put a lot into it. You know, I put, you know, I, I love boxing. It's my passion. And, you know, I've, I've done it for a long, long time. And, I, you know, I've got certain goals and, and things that I want to achieve as, as a trainer. Um, and I'm, I'm willing to work hard at it. So, obviously, I want to be working with fighters that are, that are putting the same amount of effort in. You know, mm. uh, it has to be a two-way thing. You know, if the coach wants it more than the fighter, then it's never going to work, you know. And um, so, you know, in terms of working with Hamid, you know, it took a little bit of time to for, for us both to realise as well what, if it was going to work because, you know, certain trainers suit certain fighters and, you know, a, a trainer has to be able to, you know, teach the fighter in a certain way that, the, you know, the fighter will listen and be able to, you know, understand what they're trying to get across to them uh, and, you know, appreciate what, try, what, what sort of style maybe they're trying to work towards, you know, with the fighter. Um, you know, because some, you know, there's, there's definitely some fighters that I wouldn't be able to work with because just because they, you know, they wouldn't like what I was telling them. You know, they have to, you know, a, a fighter has to, you know, trust the coach and, you know, and, yeah. and be willing to, you know, try and implement what they're trying to teach. But, you know, so after working with him for a little bit, you know, I realised that, you know, he, he wants it. That's the main thing. You know, he really, really wants it. You know, boxing's his life. That's all he's done. Um, you know, he's a, he's a proper fighter. He's got ambition uh, and he wants to su- be successful and he's willing to put the hard work and, you know, he lives and breathes it. I spoke to a lot of people that know him, um, people that he's, you know, that he's sparred, that he's trained with, um, and they all said positive things about him. Um, so, yeah, we sort of clicked, you know, pretty straight away, didn't it, mate? You know, we, yeah. you know, we w- worked really well in the gym. Um, he's a type of fighter that I like, you know, like a, I, I don't think I've got a particular style as a coach that I prefer, but I've never had a fighter 
you know, like him, you know, in terms of that aggressive and, you know, wanting to exchange punches that much and, you know, got that, you know, that sort of uh, intensity about him, you know, in terms of the way he fights and the way he trains. Um, so style-wise, you know, it's been a bit of an eye-opener for me, but something that, that I can really, I feel as a trainer, I can really get my teeth into. Um, you know, he's a, he's a good listener. Uh, he's got a lot of positive attributes as a fighter, you know, and as a person. Um, and I think, you know, I'm, I'm I'm confident. I think he'll go all the way. You know, you need you need luck in boxing, like I say about you know in terms of matching opponents and how things go. But he is uh, he's dynamite. He is dynamite, <laughs> and he he will do very very well. You know, if he sticks with it and is committed as he, he is so far, uh, he's getting better in the gym every single week. You know, he's developing, learning new skills, um, listening. You know, studying. Um, he's he, yeah, he, he's very very good. He's very good. Do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited yeah. listening to you. I'm like, <laughs> fucking, I want to watch you fight now. Um, all right, man. So we'll, we'll jump into the like the middle section of the of the show now. So my first, this is more, I just, it's more for opinion than anything. But um, the way that UFC have approached lockdown, and the way that boxing has approached lockdown, completely different, right? Um, do you think that boxing could learn anything from the way the UFC is? Um, conducted themselves throughout this this period because they've still pushed on with big fights mm. um and the one thing i would say is that i feel that the ufc does kind of force fighters hands at times to not mm. be strategic it's like look yeah yeah definitely yeah. you're on yeah, a free best, fight three, yeah one fights two two never goes down to fight ten mm. it's you know it's like that and i think is there anything that boxing can learn from it i know that match room and uh like Frank Warren they're trying to now push some some shows out. Yeah, yeah. Um but yeah, I just wanted to get your take on it, your guys' take on it. Do you watch MMA Hamid? Any UFC? I, I watch some, like just the big fights, but um I don't know about this lockdown. Um I, obviously they've put on a lot, you know, they've put on their shows and stuff. Um but I think um I think what the, Frank Warren and Eddie and have done it's um, first of all without fans boxing's not the same mm -hmm. you know without fans you know without them being there and the atmosphere and everything it's not the same but uh, like you know just to take over and you know uh, to get the fights going and to get us going it's ideal you know to have these shows behind closed doors uh, but like obviously first um, you have to like Obviously, you have to uh, go by what the governments are saying and mm. you have to respect right. what their opinion is because obviously what they're saying is f for our own good and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's f I, I think what Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren has done is a good job. You know, yeah, right? they're trying yeah. their best. I think the difference with the UFC is obviously Dana White just does what he wants. You know, <laughs> yeah. In terms of governing yeah. bodies, the UFC controls itself. Yeah. You know, The difference in boxing, mm. especially in the UK, the, you know, boxing's got... You know, very strong regulatory body. You know, the British Boxing Board control controls boxing. You know, and th they put their own guidelines and restrictions in place and whatnot. You know, which is right because it's for the you know the safety of the, the fighters and it's for their interests. But obviously, with everything that's gone on with a lockdown, you know, the the the, the board of control have been sending out sort of weekly emails updating you know fighters, coaches, promoters, managers about you know how they see boxing to be, you know, that it's going to be running over the next few months and the restrictions on shows are just uh, insane. You know what I mean? Mm. The amount, you know, the amount of testing and the amount of, uh, you know, precaution that has to, you know, that is that is in place to hold a professional boxing show now. Like, there's only Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren who can do it, you know, because they've got the TV money behind them. You know, that no small hall promoter, you know, would have had a chance, you know, in these few months. Um, so I think I think Frank and Eddie are trying their best, you know, like the, the cards that they've, they've matched up on paper, they look all right, you know, because they, they are, they, you know, they're, they're trying to match prospect versus prospect. They're trying to ma make 50-50 fights. From what I've seen, there's no real sort of journeyman that will be going in just to do a job, you know, that everyone seems to be matched up to come to win, which is good, you know, which, yeah. you know, obviously that's more like MMA, it's more like UFC. Um, now, I don't think that's I don't think that's something that you know Hearn and Warren would have done off their own backs if if the hands weren't forced. But yeah. they're in this situation, and that they've had to approach it like that. So, I think it's a good thing. I think you, you know these these few cards, 
you know, her and Warren, I think they're, I think they're going to be good because you're not going to just have your car fillers, you know, an Olympian six round run out against someone who's going to be easily, who isn't going to come to win, you know, everyone's going to come to win, I think. Um, so it should be more like the UFC, you know what I mean? You're going to see competitive fights and people really going for it because obviously there's nothing on TV either. So the, the amount of exposure these fighters can get who would never usually have got a TV date, you know, they can change their career around. They mm. can change their life around, like a, a big win or a really exciting performance, you know, where, you know, they've got a captive audience on TV and they're not watching anything else, you know. Yeah. They've got a chance to really make something for themselves. So it's, it's a big opportunity. Um, but I think, yeah, I think they're doing the, as best they can, you know what I mean, with the restrictions in place. Did you see the one, there was one on the, on Friday, the Warren card, did you see it? Wrong one. Yeah, 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 it was it, it, from BT Studio. It was it was strange, you know what I mean? Like, mm. it, like the UFC has been, you know, with no one there, no crowd, nothing. Mm. They tried to put some like, dodgy, like, fake crowd music yeah. <laughs> and then just canned <laughs> it after a couple of fights because it just sounded ridiculous. Um, so, but the show, the show was all right, you know yeah. what I mean? The, the main event was really good and everything. I think, you know, over the next few weeks, it, you know, I hate the phrase that like the new normal, but that's what it is. That's what it'll become. You know what I mean for the next two or three months, and hopefully, you know, touch wood, you know, shows will start going by the end of the year. You know, small all shows mm -hmm. to give obviously lads like Hamid and all the other guys who are on TV contracts a chance to fight because it's a livelihood. You know, I think I've always been confident that it's going to happen sooner than people think because, like every industry, like if it doesn't, it'll die. You know what I mean? And yeah. there's there's too much interest and there's too much at stake you know for that to happen you know so they've got to find a way to get these fighters fighting because otherwise you know professional boxing's like screwed you know yeah. it is yeah mm -hmm. no you're right man that's it and that's what i was that's kind of the angle i was approaching and i didn't i probably didn't explain it in the best way but in terms of um my best example of it would be when it was actually this year when we went to watch jermaine fight mm. um that 50 50 fights that are um of both british boxers or whatever yeah. is if that were, if they were televised these fighters would pick up massive 100%. much much bigger fan bases that fight yeah, yeah. between that jermaine had, yeah, yeah and yeah, even yeah, danny case, um, so yeah even danny's fight before Whitaker, yeah yeah, yeah that those two great. fights were, were awesome ace, man. Like, so yeah. fun fighters coming to win do you know what i mean like yeah. match competitively you know no one just coming just you know to pick up a check both really going for it it exactly. was awesome yeah. it was a good fight wasn't it it was amazing and I, I think that um i'm not a fighter so i can't really say anything but i think don't be worried about taking the mm. odd loss if you're in fights like that you're going to get put in other big fights exactly and, yeah. and i think that's like a i think that's a good message for for for, for people to have but yeah definitely 100 percent. you know and I, I said that to jermaine i've said that to hamid when it's come i've said like you know you're gonna lose like, that's it you're gonna lose fights that's because the way i want fighters matched is you know to to you know see what ability they've got you know and the only way to do that is to test yourself mm. in 50 50 fights you might come up short you probably will come up short but you know the mark of a fighter is being able to you know handle that adversity and move on learn from it grow and develop and get better you know that's what jermaine did you know he had a yeah. bad loss came back from it a few months later came back with a really good win it's not damaged him at all do you know what i mean no, no obviously it was a bit of a rebuilding job you know psychologically mentally getting him back from that but you know it's it's all what perspective you take you know it's and if you're if you're willing to do it and if you want to see how far you can go see how far you can push your potential you know you have to fight in these these hard fights, you know, when at, at that sort of level, at title level, at championship level, as you're going forward, no one stays undefeated, except Floyd. Let's <laughs> not mention him. I you was going to ask you about him, and then I thought, do you know what, I won't wind no, up. So I'm, 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 I'm going to take a different uh, different approach. So it was like right at the, the beginning of lockdown, right? And we posted it on our uh, socials. It was a tweet from UCAD, and they said, oh, because of coronavirus, we're not going to be testing anyone anymore. For a couple mm, of months, you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And I just wondered that my approach to that is not really. I'm just saying it. Was, it just seemed a bit crazy to even say that. But mm. then, my question is, what what are your two opinions on what they should do with drug cheats? Because mm. Jarrell Miller just got done again after he just got done. He's not even had a fight since. Yeah, it's <laughs> he's crazy, just isn't it? got done for the Joshua <laughs> fight, got banned, come back got popped again i'm like right mm. you just ban him don't you mm. is that like what do you do with these guys i think they should just be banned for life to be honest mm. because uh, 
you're in there, you're trying to hurt the next, you know, whoever's mm. in front of you. And, you know, when you're taking stuff, you know, when you're taking things, it obviously does something to the body. So I think, you know, like, you, you're playing with lives there. Mm. So I think that it should be, boxing should be a clean sport and anyone that gets caught should be banned for life, full stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it, yeah. This, this shouldn't be really a grey area. Yeah. In that, you know what I mean? It's that's it. You get caught, you you're done in the sport. You know, it's too mm. much at stake. You know what I mean? There's people's lives at stake. But you know, this is boxing. You know, like this is the dodgiest sport it there's is, ever yeah. been. The most corrupt Look sport. Look at Canelo. He got caught. They were everyone's been caught, man. Like <laughs> yeah. Fury's been caught. Fury, people yeah. forget about that. Yeah. Alone. Dillian White wears his B sample. People forgot about this. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. you know, like <laughs> fighters have got you know. Promoters and TV networks have got powerful lawyers. You know, UCAD is not fit for service as a as a you know as a body. You know, it's not mm. because Fury exposed them. You know, like basically, you know, threatening to you know sue them. You know, and they didn't have the funds to you know go to court. You know, so that was just dropped under the carpet. I th- how much can I say on this? You know, you can say what you want, mate. <laughs> no well, I mean, you know, it's, I, it's our show. Yeah. We we'll probably get tagged. <laughs> 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 Like the Dillian White situation, yeah, I think something very similar has happened with UCAD. He's been caught, you know, that there's no there's no grey area. He failed the test. He failed that first test, yeah. The B sample just disappears. We never hear about it. Mm. You know, all the all the stuff surrounding it, you know, the interviews. Did you see the like the dodgy interview where the press conference like the day before the fight where you know, the Hearn and White are caught speaking sort of off mic, but you can still hear it, and mm. White's going, oh, you know, I got, how did I fail that? You know, I pa- you know, I passed every single test till this last one, and Hearn's like, shh, shh, shh. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. they're banged to rights, but they've got too much money. There's too much money involved, so they've probably, again, there's probably threatened you, Cab, with, you know, what kind, some kind of lawyer, some kind of, you know, action, court action, yeah. and they don't, you know, the these are powerful people. They've got more money than the testers. You know, they're always, you know, that's what they always said about all professional sport in terms of, you know, drugs, cheats and steroids, etc. They're always one step ahead, you know, of the, of the testers, mm. you know, otherwise people won't be getting caught, you know, yeah, uh, they won't even get a chance to get caught. So, you know, the, it's, it's hard and, you know, you, you don't want to give up the battle and say, yeah, you can do what you want, you know, no. because that's not right mm. either. Um, but it's a really difficult situation for the authorities, I think, as well. Um, but boxing has never, you know, boxing has never done itself justice in terms of what it should or shouldn't do morally. You know, like people, you know, like Miller. You know, it's a joke that he's got. He's been given a second chance. He'll probably come yeah, back yeah, again. He will. He, he will. Bob Arum said a few days ago he'll never fight on a top top rank card. <laughs> Someone no, it, will take him. Exactly. Mm. Someone will take him. And if 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 it means Arum making a few quid. It, it, of course, they'll have him fighting again. You know, like people got very short memories in boxing, very short memories. Even stuff, you know, as, as bad and as brutal as this, you know, in terms of the, t- you know, you know, drugs and cheating. Um, but you know, like, yeah, what, I just don't like the hypocrisy around it. You know, like there's there's been high profile and you know low profi- profile fighters in the UK that have failed tests mm. blatantly, and you know. There was no, there wasn't the same uproar as there was when you know um, now Miller's been done again. You know, you get all the usual, you know, the Sky Bellew, um, who else? Johnny Nelson. You know, all that absolutely outrageous. So yeah. that, well, they, you know, mm. well, they just forgotten about Dylan White. They've just forgotten about him. He's basically you know? a Sky fighter, though, isn't he? Eh? He's, he's a Sky yeah, fighter. Yeah, of course he is. Yeah, they look after their own. Yeah, yeah. But, but sometimes boxing does stink with that. You know, mm. like it is. The, you know the hypocrisy that that does my head in. You know this is a, it should be a blanket rule, but it isn't. People pick and choose who they're going to forgive, who they're going to forget. Canelo's brilliant. You know, one of my favourite fighters. Again, you know, failed the test. Yeah. Contaminated me. Come on. You know, <laughs> yes. Fury, best heavyweight in the world. Brilliant, brilliant skills. Done for Again, yeah. dodgy me. What was it? Wild boar. He yeah. said he had too much wild boar. Yeah. You know, like. Th- <laughs> Uh, like and these these people are heroes. They're heroes, mm. you yeah. know. But Miller, because you know his face don't fit. He, you know, he's the worst. He's the, the gets you know, pinned as the worst. Exactly, yeah. 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 Personification of evil, he is. Yeah. But there's fighters before that have done it. Active fighters and there's fighters who are doing it now and probably will do in the future. Um, and that's just it. And it's all wrong. Yeah. And they should all be. 
Yeah. Strung up like dogs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Kill them, hang them all. <laughs> all right, so last last one, you just mentioned him, but we might as well get on it. It's uh, AJ Fury. It does look like it will happen, mm. right? So obviously I'm going to make you guys pick how you think it goes. Big chance. I think it still won't happen for quite a while. That's your prediction, I'm like, Jesus. No, I think, I, I, no he was saying that... Put a downer on it. He, he was saying that it, it might happen, but I don't. Th- I still think that it might not happen. They, they might still drag it on and on and on, like they did with Mayweather and Pacquiao. Mm. Mm. Um, them two might fight everyone, and then eventually, they, they, you know, they, they might fight each other and make the fight really big. But I've always said, I think um, Tyson Fury will beat him. Yeah. Yeah. Much better fighter skill wise, and with Joshua, he's, he's, he's Joshua's really good. He's strong, but I just think he's got no boxing skills. Like he doesn't move his head that much and stuff. But uh, but I think yeah, he's a world champion sure. at the end of the day. Yeah. Nah, I agree with you for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. What about you? Yeah, I, th- I think I'd, I'd always lean towards Fury. You know, I just think he's the combination. You know, the combination of his skill. And his sort of boxing athleticism with his size, you know what I mean, and with his dimensions, it's just so hard to deal with. You know, he's massive. You know, Joshua's a big guy as well, but, you know, Fury's so big, you know, so long-armed, and the fact that he's he's so well-coordinated, you know, with that build as well, just makes him a nightmare for, for you know, obviously for Joshua, but for anyone. And any, any fighter, any heavyweight in history, in my opinion, you know, like he is huge, and he knows how to use it really well. Mm. Um, I wouldn't, you know, I'd never say... Heavyweight boxing as well, you know, anything can happen. Joshua can really punch. It wouldn't massively surprise me if he if he beat Fury. You know, if he put it on him early or caught him with a shot, he's a really good finisher, Joshua. He, you know, he seems to be, obviously his last fight, he, you know, he boxed to more of a game plan. You know, maybe his, you know, his boxing brain's improving. Maybe he's got people around him, you know, who would, you know, try and find the right sort of strategy or game plan for Fury. And obviously with boxing, especially heavyweight boxing, you know, only takes one punch. But, you know, like Fiori, he's, he's so confident as well at the minute. You know, like that last fight was unbelievable. He'll think he can go out and either box Joshua's head off or stop him. You know what I mean? And neither of them would surprise me. You know, the only thing that surprised me, the only result that, that couldn't happen, in my opinion, watch it happen now, but is, is Joshua beating Fury on points. Like that yeah, can't happen, yeah. you know. That just cannot happen for the reasons that like Hamid said as well. You know, Joshua was great, but he doesn't really move his head very well. He's not as nowhere near as natural a fighter as Tyson. Um, so I, I can't see that happening. But any other result wouldn't particularly surprise me. And just, just hopefully it will happen now, though. Yeah. All right. Last question. Very, very quick question. Would it be absolutely criminal if this fight didn't happen in the UK? Definitely, yeah, yeah. It has to have done it. A bit know, awful, like, it? Yeah, it would. Yeah, because yeah, they're saying like Saudi, they're saying yeah, the yeah, US. Yeah, like, yeah. it's going to be talks, money mm. talks, doesn't it? You know, like uh, to be fair, like I'd take, I'd, I'd still, I'd take Vegas. I think that'd be the only sort of uh, alternative apart from the UK because it's still the fight capital of the world. You know, Vegas and historically all you know the, the amount of massive fights that have happened there. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like it, it obviously could feel the biggest stadium in the UK and the fans. You know, it'd be cheating the fans big time. You know, mm. what I mean, the fans have built these two fighters. You know, it's the fans who you know who pay the money to watch them. You know, the f- you know without the fans, you know, the fighters don't exist either. You know, so we deserve it. You know, yeah, you're right, we deserve it. And if it if it if it ended up in Saudi or some other like sort of far flung country that hasn't you know that hasn't had any boxing history or you know it's just it's there purely for the money, then that's just scandalous. Yeah, mm. it's really bad. Yeah. Really bad. Bradford, bring, bring it back to Bradford. Valley Parade, let's go. <laughs> 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 Valley Parade. I remember when they were going to say that Witter was going to fight Hatton yeah, and yeah, yeah. Valley Parade and yeah. they were fucking after him. <laughs> we're still waiting. Hammered on the undercard. Yeah, <laughs> Get we're you made it. That would be like, good. Darren. There's a lot of Bradford fighters there is. now. Yeah. Bradford's, Bradford boxing is booming. Isn't yeah. it? We talk about this all the time. Like, There's going to be shows in Bradford, big shows, I think. I because so. the amount of good fighters coming out of Bradford, undefeated fighters, mm. exciting fighters. Mm. You know, the, the city is is ripe for like a you know a decent show well promoted you know to make some of these guys you know stars you know like this and there's a lot of support as well you know a lot of yeah. people will support these fighters and it's got to happen so many so much talent in 
Leeds and Bradford at the minute. I don't think it's ever, ever been like this. You know, like historically, Leeds and Bradford, they've, you know, they've been just in, on the back burner compared to Manchester, Sheffield, mm. you know, Liverpool. You know, they haven't had it. It's not, they're not boxing cities, but they are now. They are now. Oh, world time. champion, you know, we've got Josh, you know, like the world champion mm. in Leeds, you know, the, and all these fighters inspired by him. Like, we've got to capitalise on it now, you know, like as, as a fight, as fight cities, because, you know, it's, it's a proper little golden golden age for, for fighters here. And they should all be pushing towards titles and championships and bringing, like, big nights back to the cities because, you know, they deserve it and they work hard enough for it. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Big time. Fingers crossed. All right, so I'm going to let Julian uh, kick off with the last questions. And yep. you've had some prep. You've right. had some warnings. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Let's we go. won't ask you this first one, so we'll go straight to our <laughs> meds. So who are your top three pound-for-pound pound fighters? Um, Can be dead or alive as well. Muhammad Ali. Um, one of my favourites. Uh, Roberto Duran. Mm. And... Uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. And are those in order as well? Of Ali top one? Yep. Yeah, all right. Then Durant, then Julio Cesar Chavez. Senior, nice. not junior. <laughs> 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 not junior. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, then what we've got? We've got who's been your toughest spa so far? I've had a lot of tough spas, um, but um, toughest spa, um, I think, my, uh, what do you say now? Um, <laughs> gonna be that hard. Uh, that hard? <laughs> <laughs> All my spas have been easy. Um, Lewis Ritson, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Ritson. Ritson. Lewis Ritson. That was when he was on his, you know, on on the war path as well, wasn't it? Yeah, like yeah, when he was yeah. winning, lead up to his British titles. Yeah. Was it? Was that like what? Yeah, it was like Lightweight, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He was. Absolutely, he was a monster. He used to him. come to my eye gym, you know, like he used to come to Birmingham often, and we used to go there and. Mm. We used to always spy each other, and we've had some hard, tough spars, you know, just going for because what his style is similar to mine as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's great 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 in the man, ring, man. middle of the ring and yeah. just start fighting, <laughs> <laughs> and then he doesn't give up, and I don't give up. And, but yeah, it's you know, it's been good, good spar with him. Sparred, um, Sam Bowen's been good spar, um, and then yeah, it's, 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 there's been a lot of you know, good spars, but I'd say Lewis Gritson's been probably. Good, good. Oh, I'd love to it. watch that. <laughs> Brutal. Like, I love Britson. You know, he was. I know he's he, he's lost one now, and but he was that that when he won the British title and when he had his defenses like just knocking everyone out in a couple of rounds. It was unbelievable, mm. unbelievable. Really strong fighter and very strong indeed. Yeah. Nice, nice. Last question. You've got a pass to lay out any celebrity. Who would it be and why? Who would it be? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Who do you hate? Who do I hate? Uh, do I hate any of them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a nice guy. You're lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, you won't believe this guy. How nice, you know, like I was just thinking honestly, that. I can't. He yeah, was fucking, you must switch. Man. Put him in a boxing <laughs> ring. Like a red, red. It's, just, uh, it's horrible. Yeah. Like, in the boxing ring. I just can't think of anyone to be honest. It's so, Sam. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll anyone you no, want to no, lay no, out. No, no, no. I'm, a, guy, out, I'm no. a nice guy too. I'm a, I'm a nice guy. I love everyone. Yeah. Now. But awesome. It's been great having you both on. Mm. If Thank people want to follow you both, um, follow what you're doing as well. Have you got some socials that you guys can shout out? Yeah. Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Hamid Gaz, just straight Hamid Gaz, and I should come up. And yeah, Oster's Boxing on Instagram. Floyd May with a fan page. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. You followed by Joshua, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He followed me a few months ago. Yeah, there's a few, like, Big high profile mm. boxer follow. Obviously, me, put yeah. in a word for us, but don't, when he said that he's got no boxing skills, we'll forget that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man, that's it. Pleasure. Right, cheers, lads. Smashed it.